six if anybody can take that card. Have we got the stick in one There's one on every film, isn't it? <laughs> Actually, you've solved the problem. I have to There's room for a set up the top. Oh, on one famous weekend here, we actually had to set on the stair. We did? Yes. <laughs> yes. Could you do that video around so it's on the top, please? Can I have a clear time? Time six to set up for it. The proof is set up for it. We need a few more. We have six. Come and show it. Let's be on video. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright actually is in the dancers and not in the figures and the bits and pieces. 
and there's a very long tradition of country dancing or of, of steam movements and figures and adding them to your own room and things like that. And that's really the purpose of this sort of weekend. It's really um, lots of ideas to present to you. Uh, you may not present them terribly well and you may not do them very well. That really doesn't matter. It's, this is the sort of weekend, you know, feel the, the width and not the quality. Right, we're going to see how far the Cotswold Morris spreads, which is why we're starting off with pseudo border. Because, as you know, border, there are 11 collected dancers, only two of which aren't done by anybody. So the, the corpus is trivial. It's all different. It's not like any side I know does. Anyhow, we actually have a modern thing called Border Morris, which is a creation in the last 20 years. Um, and it owes as much to uh, Cops or Morris or people's understanding of Cops or Morris as it owes to anything else. So I'm quite happy to fit in the time um, and we'll do serious dancing tomorrow. Right? <laughs> <coughs> Face. <coughs> this dance is called Fillers Field Common. Right? It's stolen from Nancy Cousins. I say stolen. Um, they invited me to come along and video them. They turned up an hour late. At the time they started their show, the next team at the pub had turned up already. Yeah, that's Morris time, isn't it? Right, um, have we decided who the music is, or is it me as well? I thought so. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I can't stay and drink at the same time. Boy, are there any spare dancers? Yes. What? Spare up here, oh, no, no, you carry on dancing up there. That's much more fun. I'm going to enjoy yourself. Do you want some fun? What? With me?
face show opposite up and down the line. I love these weekends, it's a genius level we've got. How you come here at right angles to the others? Are they not?
Well, we've done the three to four, three to six. Yeah. You're going to shout out sticking with your other end, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Shed your inhibitions. <laughs> right. Then the, the, the next figure, the right, next figure, is that you turn your back to where you came from, back eight to where that was, one, two. Then we're just going to do ranks. All the range, that's right, not having the range, all the way around. Ending up facing. And we do a chorus from there. And then the final figure is like the first figure. Right? We all dance up to the middle. And then when the, the top pair get back up to the top, off they go. Fall over. Right? That's as much instruction as my four minutes ago. Right. Are we ready?
Now, what's interesting about the Battle of New Orleans, the Little War of 1812, on the whole, 1814, on the whole, the British, I hate to use the word British being an Englishman, but the British beat the Americans on the whole, except for the very last battle. That was careless. They actually won the last battle. The only trouble was the war had been over six weeks. <laughs> Nobody told General Jackson, so he continued to fight the British. Yeah. So I said the only battle they actually won it was uh, unfortunately by cheating. But the great thing about it is that uh, one of my forefathers, Sir William Domit, who was first Sea Lord, signed the order for Admiral Co Coburn to actually sail across the Atlantic and bombard Baltimore with rockets. So I must be the only family who proudly boasts we have a line in the American National Anthem that the rockets really clear. And then they walk, went up to Potomac and uh, as the militia fired at them, they burnt then the Senate building in the White House. It wasn't called the White House before then, but it was so charred they had to paint it white. So again, I feel slightly responsible. <laughs> <laughs> I'll <laughs> stand in front of your friends and say, it's thanks to my family it's that colour. <laughs> so how many people can say that? Right, let's get our sticks again.
Now, the monkey, it was at the time, for those who have a long memory of television, they had this uh, Chinese or was it Japanese program oh, yeah. series about a Chinese legend of which monkey was one of the characters. On the sets, trivial do things to get the side of that. Well, uh, it's been taught to a number of sides. Partly that's my fault. Right. Uh, it's all one. Road Morris caught the Worcestershire hay. Now, the Worcestershire hay is great people, and I think like the hay we're going to do in this one, but that, it's a good way of calling it. And uh, over the years, have you seen that? It's grown a bit. So we're going to do something which is a bit longer than the original. Um, I suppose we can call it the wanted wallet for tonight. <laughs> right. Well, what does the hay consist of, right? Everybody, we start with facing across, anyway. Right. Now, monkey hay down, we're all going to face down to start. And the, we go down a bit, turn eight, go eight a bit, then come up twice a bit, and in. In other words, four of you dance around the square. Now, the pen at the top, we already think they've just moved up a bit. Right? If you go back to where you were, <laughs> When you, when you face down and the bottom four go down a bit, the top pair go down a lot to the bottom. Right? So when you all go out, they're at the bottom, and you come up more double bit, you see, because they have to end up at the bottom. They join the other set now. <laughs> New tops go down the middle, and the others go down, up, and out. Now it's not a real, you do not change the order. You just get to one top that gets to the bottom, but you all move up, right? And then the third lot goes in. Now what's important is that the one going down the middle gets there in time to join with the going out and up the eight side. Right? You've got, I'm afraid you have to. Um, that's right, yes. It's like pears casting. It's like you've had curry for dinner. <laughs> so you're in a rush to get there. <laughs> then, of course, you'll find there's some music left over. So the stick tapping is all from right to left. Bash it Monkey hay for the top again. Except you're not in the same places. 
No, it, you, it's still done from this end, you know, it's just you know, other people have to do it. And they're on the wrong side as well. Normally causes confusion. No, you mustn't take the tape. sides and dance a figure eight around the arch. Brilliant. Rain, cross through the middle again and rain to their place. Whoa, they are doing that. <laughs> the top pair cast eight and follow the bottoms. Complete the figure eight by going round the bottoms and up the middle to place. If the bottoms are clever, they make an arch with their sticks as well to make them go up the hard way. Let's try that to do some.
The final figure starts the same way. But this time, when you do the twirl at the start, you do a twirl and a half. So you do. Project them into the middle. Back to where you started, and I'll walk this section. The objective is that the other, the post, starts going across. But when you get to the other side, you have a rest over there as well. In other words, all eight of you are actually going to trouble. Rain these stars and back again. So let's start walking it over, right? Twirl around the end, one and a half. Back into your star. And I literally mean that. No, no, no. The posts are in this time. Ready to go half. One and a half. And then one and a half round the next lot. Turning one way, and the second time turning the other. Right? 
So when we're going round, when we're going round, right? One. The natural is one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So you start with the right hand and then clap on the right. And then left.
Right, from the 
twice the speed. And they flung the people rain into the stars, the only way of describing it. Yeah, it's a really rain. Rob Roy, it's probably only fair to point out their sticks or the lights. A bit shorter too. When you say when you say other other neighbour, people in the middle just like face the other and do stick them in the middle and then. Uh, one and seven, two and eight, move in. So the seven. Four houses each time we came over that, and that's the middle straight. So we need to look a square one way, a square one way. Not only Photographs of the Morrison. Uh, he reckoned 
Cad reckoned he'd actually learnt most of his Morris up in Lancashire. And the description of the step that he used was a you know, a big swing eight to the side, a sort of polka step for a big swing. Which makes you wonder, you know. But like all these stories about people who got their dancing for somebody else, you know, it may be one element kind of thing. Now, um, the dancers, or some of the dancers, were collected by Mary Neal's collectors, not unfortunately by Clive Carey, because that would have survived, but one of the others. I was Mrs. Tuke, who was the secretary of the Women's Suffrage Political Union, or um, the, I don't know, what's the, George and his brother, doesn't really matter, uh, who became prominent writers and uh, play producers and other there. It was one of those, the collector. And the dances, these Northampton dances, appeared on their programmes. Bean setting, Bows of London City, and things like this. Now, they were all perfectly sensible um, titles for Northamptonshire Morris. So, one is left, I'm left with the feeling, I should say, not in general, um, that it's probably like Bidford. It was something where somebody taught the Morris actually had known on dancers from a number of places. They had a mixed background where he got it in like all good form and then actually had it done his own way. Right? There is a story that in fact some of the dancers they got by writing to somebody in London who sent them a lot of tunes. Um, now that was puzzling for me for a long time because before 1906 or 1907 there weren't any published, I thought. But I discovered from Roy Judge, who was right, written about Mary England and is writing about theatrical morals so back in the 19th century. In fact, there was a, a strong feeling about what really was Morris. Nothing to do, I might say, with the tradition as it was in the villages. That was degenerate. You know, the way Morris was in Shakespearean times and it clearly, so they thought, was done to um, Staines Morris and the Morisco and all these classic ancient tunes, which is why they figured very largely in revivals about that sort of time. But I say revivals, they revivals of traditional Morris, but actually performance of Morris in carnivals, in um, festivals and things of that sort. Right. And that's presumably why Darcy Ferris, who was a pageant master, introduced such tunes to the Bidford Morris because they were the ancient tunes. And why Sharp was so keen to publish and start with, because he was one of his, at least when he started, with a great uh, convert into the idea of what Mary England was all about. Having said that, uh, as far as I know, nothing's ever been actually collected in the Gogan. There was a dance that was in circulation in my bath days, as it were, uh, that in the Northwest style, I might say. This is the first one I've turned up actually in the border style. <laughs> you know, now bear in mind it's Northamptonshire, it's a long way, but it has all the right flavor. So I presume that somebody has generously made up a dance, given it a, a useful title, and passed it on. Uh, um, and I reckon it's worthwhile, isn't it? So we're going to try. Right, in your set, you dance with your stick on your shoulder, and they say we don't clash except uh, we use it in certain figures. The chorus, number two, swaps um, with number three, then with number six. Oh, you're number eight. <laughs> and then you know, naturally with number seven. And then number one does the same zigzag. It's called zigzag, believe it or not. It reminds me of Shunt in Herschel uh, Montford Jones. Right? That's the chorus. Next time you're on the top. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Figures. Star in the middle. Everybody. Turn out your turn. Turn it and change stick to the other hand and come back again. <laughs> And of course, <laughs> then number one, the new number one. <laughs> the middle four 
who were, were somewhere else to start with, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to turn towards their neighbour. They will cross their sticks in the middle, changing hands if necessary. Middle, that's right, middle. This pair have got that's their middle, not your middle. No, 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 no. The ends, right, will cast out from the end and go between the middles and up to place. And as there's some music left over, we all dance a loop outwards. Now, when we did the zigzag, when we did the zig, can we do it to music? Yeah. The tune's 95, which is the combined age of us. I'm 60 <laughs> Well, you're not insulted, are you? No, no, no. <laughs>
So if you like to get your drinks and we we'll sit at the bottom here. Yeah? tonight is the thought about the magic of the Morris. Um, one of the problems I have when going around the world, as it were, is that people keep looking backwards at history instead of saying about you know, the pagan. I've never even heard sites talking about the pre-pagan origins of Morris. <laughs> you have to think about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, if, if you've been watching the um, television series about the origins of man, you know, obviously men or upright persons, I mean, one was a woman, of course, you know, upright persons have been reigning for about a million years, so the Morris can have a real ancient origin. Only one. You know, um, but they haven't actually found a Morris dance, so they've only found the odd, old, old bone or so, you know. So you can't really trace your origin back. But still, people tend to sort of want to justify themselves on the basis of history. And I had a particularly, what I thought was obnoxious statement in the, our local county magazine about the, the Morris at Winchester, but actually saying, you know, it's a male-only activity, traditionally it always has been, you know, and the women only have had occasional role and things like this, you know. And I find that sort of thing as a, just ignorance of history sort of business, you know. 19th century culture may be worth preserving, as I say, but... Uh, you can't preserve all the other things that went with it, the poverty, the prejudice, and all the other ill feeling. It isn't just a question of what was the relative role of the sexes in the 19th century. I'm sure they had the same relative positions they have now, in some respects. Um, but it's the whole attitude, you know, that they're looking backwards and sort of saying, well, you know, how it was. You know, somehow all to be preserved. Now, for a long time, I, um, I will thought that you know, I, I grew up in a traditional culture of the sort that uh, my father, who is now has been for 69 years a member of the Painters and Decorators Union in Southampton, is the oldest serving medal and was given a member and was given a gold medal for his long service. Now he doesn't pay a subscription, though, so he's quite prepared to receive it. Um, but I always remember we used to have an annual um, union atrium, and I went once, and it, it was very traditional. They, they got a coach, and they set off to go to Weymouth from St. Hampton, and they loaded the back of the bus up, of course, with crates of beer. And, of course, by the time everybody turned up, we were about an hour and a half late leaving. By this time, everybody was, who was on the coach early was well tanked up. And we got outside St. Hampton and stopped at a pub. Then we stopped at another pub. Then we had lunch at the Lindhurst. <laughs> right. Now, those who know St. Hampton will realise that we hadn't got very far from the Well, having driven past them every day, it was sort of um, the afternoon. And they had the traditional decision that it was not worth pursuing Weymouth. <laughs> so we pulled off the road while people slept off a bit of beer waiting. Well got the crepes they actually and sat there drinking until the pub at Emery Dane opened and then we were on our way back into Southampton and apparently in all the years my father went on the stating they had never got past the new forest ever. <laughs> right, traditional culture, there was no women in sight, in fact I don't think they even talked about women or sex or anything like that, it was all about Southampton Football Club, you know, the team that's due to be relegated any year now <laughs> and so on. Um, right, traditional culture, I used to think there are many aspects of culture like the fact that, um, certainly when I was younger, it was sort of traditional for older men to josh the young women, you know, uh, tease them and so on, you know, until I actually talked to some young women who were on the receiving end of this, you know, who didn't really understand, it really wasn't sensible at all. And began to realise, of course, that the so-called traditional culture is actually just a load of prejudices, you know, it's all, a lot of history, things like that, a lot of things that we actually could well deal with out. And so on. So that focused my attention, my personal attention, on really say, well, 
what is the tradition, what do we actually mean? And I've often told people that um, when I set out to say, well, let's find out what the tradition was and turn it out. I asked people, you know, and they told me things, and you just say, oh, that must be right, you know, if really sort of it. How did Sharp teach you? And then couldn't show, they didn't know, they remembered, but they couldn't do it, because they couldn't remember how to dance as a beginner, what it was like, but they could only dance like they could dance now. And every generation I tried, it came back to the fact that people can only do what they do now. The tradition is here and now. Whatever we talk about roots and the past and so on, in a sense is unknowable. A film gives you one occasion, you know, a video, one occasion. If you ever video anybody, they say, what a good day. We didn't get it right, or we weren't trying, or we deliberately changed it. You know, they always have some reason why what you've got isn't typical, let alone right, as it were. You know, and it's actually very true, you know, this you've got a snapshot of one occasion. And the Morris isn't actually about one occasion, it's all about a performance and a, a tolerance, a spread on how it can behave in ways. So I came back yet again to this whole thought that the Morris is for here and now, which meant that we have to find out why we do it in the here and now. Why do we do it now? Now you talk to people and no doubt you're all got a strong opinion what it is. But the sort of conclusion I sort of reach is there's some sort of magic about it. And I got a feeling for this when John Kirkpatrick was talking at the roots of the board of Morris. It's sort of going on and saying that the Morris has a role. Not quite sure how to express it, but people like the Morris. They pay it to come and dance at a wedding or, you know, do of that sort. So, and particularly I, I'm always conscious of the fact that when we've danced at hospitals, we don't get patients saying, I'm ill, take that bloody noise. <laughs> These we people, are. I can't move, and they're jumping around, you know, insulting. They never respond like that at all. They actually sit there and they grin. They talk about it to the nurse or staff for weeks after, well, hours, and yet not weeks, depending on how long they live. <laughs> they talk about it after and so on. They actually, and if you would perform it, you know, if you're performing the most, you actually get a lift out of it yourself, you know. Now I've always put it down to a sort of self-hypnosis because I, I have no great belief in spirituality and all that sort of rubbish, you know. It's chemistry, at least that's the modern way of interpreting it, right, you know. It's what joggers get when they go out, they get on a high so they stop to think about it, you know. And I'm sure all those who've danced a, a longish time know what it's like. You feel some, some occasion you're floating around. It's fantastic. You're absolutely wonderful until you look at a video of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those who were at Bath will remember this. The days we went out thinking we had performed superbly, we thought. And then we looked at the film I took a couple of years after we'd taken it, you know, and we were awful. You know, well, it was awful. I mean, we were awful compared to what we thought we were. You know, we just actually didn't dance very well. But we had this tremendous feeling. And it comes over to the audience. The audience warms to it. You, you know the old story about it doesn't matter how well you dance as long as you're enjoying it and the audience goes along with you. It isn't, that's too simplistic an explanation. I think the fact is people respond to, first of all, it's live. It's there in front of you. Right? They also respond to the fact it's rhythmic, sort of. <laughs> you know what I mean? And alive and somehow or other, you know, constructing. And the fact that it never repeats itself. It's all spontaneous. You know, it's what real folk arts are made. You know, it never repeats itself. I know when I started them, I was always advised by our squire to say, well, the day you find one day, one Morris day is like another Morris day, go and do something else. There's plenty of things you can do with your life. You know. It's the spontaneity that makes the Morris. Now we often talk about, well, we often have talked to us about the European analogues of uh, the Morris, you know, like the Romanian, Romanian bob. Now when you study them in detail, the dance they do isn't much like Morris, but they never are, those foreign things. Um, there is no great commonality in the the dance inspiration from which our dancers come from and what the people on the continent do. But the motivation, that's the dressing of Anne and bringing good luck, well, more good luck. The Romanians actually have little skits, little play, playlets and so on, which are meant to illustrate issues about life in general, because 
when you're an unsophisticated community, say like the Red Indians were in, in the States, you couldn't actually, you didn't have the words, you didn't have the jargon, so you actually had to express it in some other way, like by cleaning, by dancing, the things like this, you know, getting to grips with nature and the rule. I mean, the dancers were in the rule, you know, sort of thing. The, um, this sort of uh, communication. Now, the Romanians actually go around to people who are ill, you know, and they do the little bit, they, they have a little humorous skit, they do their dance and things like this. And they are very conscious of the fact that it gives something to the people they're performing for. They have it all dressed up in this magical term, you know, a thing like this. But obviously, there's something that the Morris does, some interaction with people. Now, I think we, the Morris, ought to try and express some of these things because I think that's what justifies our existence. You know, the fact that we actually provide something, which isn't just entertainment. If you want entertainment, it's on the stage, it's in the tele television box. You know, you get entertainment in all sorts of ways. Cop fighting, if necessary, you know, depends on what turns you on. But somehow the Morris brings some sort of magic along. And I call it magic because I don't actually have a way of talking about it. I don't really have words to describe what I mean. Now, have I got that sort of message over yet? Anybody? You know, do you have the same sort of feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but there was a time in the hospital when the old people's hospital come, um, whatever, old people's home. <coughs> Throughout pains, we start one of our dances with a, with a song. And halfway through, there was an old woman who hadn't really looked as very much, was sitting on the of this. Half of the song and just said, Why well, don't you shut up? How <laughs> <laughs> bad did you sing? <laughs> <laughs> Not every, not every hospital patient is sympathetic to Morris. She's probably, she's probably a musician, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Try dancing well, in the mall. Yeah. I mean, every Christmas I go with a group carol singing, and despite the fact they complain that I actually play the carols as if it's Morris dancing, <laughs> you know, and partly that's because that's Fleet's fault, because we actually practice our dances to carols at Christmas. Um, in fact, the patients look forward to it. They actually like carol singing, you see. I think there's something about live people caring, mm. people coming. Like people. <laughs> you see. Now, isn't that what the Morris has talked about? You know, good luck visiting means it actually comes. Once a year, it's on your doorstep. You don't have to go for it. It knocks on your door. You know, if you ever go around with Abbott's Bromley, you know, on its Monday in September, it's marvellous when you arrive at one of the eight, nine farms. They're all there. There's a tray of beer for people and things like this. It's absolutely fantastic. You know, and the people there obviously have looked forward to it mm. and get something tremendous out of it. It's one of, one of the spots on the Abram, Morris Tours, things like that. Yeah. It's actually one of the old houses that the old houses used to go to, the original team used to go to. And the new people think it's wonderful and they invite their friends around, give us food and drink. It's, it, it's probably, apart from dancing on the Morris Dancers ground itself, it's probably the most important bit of the whole tour. And it's the only bit the public don't get to see because it's a private house we go to the yeah. garden and dance from there. Isn't there a danger of being patronised though? And patronised in you know, the, the worst sense. Um, I mean I can think my own team is giving like this. Half what the money. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not quite prepared to be insulted like that, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the we're close to us is um Oundle. And Elmville has a public school and um, has some awfully rich people and some awfully nice and picturesque pubs and we dance in one of them twice a year. And we keep going back, but each time we go we have a mixture of good experience and bad experience. And the bad experience is the people who come and say, oh how quaint, it's the Morris dancers, oh how nice, how old English. And there's a danger of being pigeonholed into that. And yes, okay, um, you know, there is a magic, but it's a sort of magic they feel they've grown out of, and um, you're there as as a as part of John Major's warm beer and old ladies cycling to communion. I mean, it's that sort of pigeonholing, which which 
actually, yeah. Yeah. but <laughs> does does anybody meet that attitude if you go to you know, the same place and meet the same people year after year? I mean, isn't that really the sort of thing you get on the odd occasion? You know, when they meet you. Once? Well, we've been going to this place for about six years. Yeah. Um, I suppose the problem is that it's the sort of pub where people come and eat, and you know, it's not a local pub. But then most pubs, a lot of pubs nowadays, are like that. I think you have to ask yourself: if you don't go next year, what would their reaction be? Would they notice? They won't because be they're... there because they're there, you know, now, and they. But there will, I say, there will you a good experience and bad experience, and there are people who look forward to it. There was even somebody who looked, who asked me to sing this year. Well, there's one occasion that surely was certain <laughs> that you remember it, when Jack Straws and Pilgrim went out to what what turned out to be, it was one of the King William the Fourths out in the sort of hills of Surrey, I can't remember which one. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, it, you know, there were a couple of cars where the young stockbroker had obviously borrowed Pater's car to turn up. I mean, the amount of money flushed playing around that pub is ridiculous. And you know, we were very much tolerated. And then one of Jack Straws at the time did some clog dancing. And she just got on a bit of, bit of the floor and started dancing. And you could have heard a feather hit the floor, that little ping in that pub. Everyone suddenly thought, hang on, this is something special. They'd seen Morris dances before. They hadn't seen this, but it was, again, it was all the things that yeah. was real. She was one of the crowd. Yeah. And it, it was one of the most best bits of folk theatre or whatever, yeah. folk atmosphere that yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. We, we go back to Ascot under Witchwood now pretty well every year. Well, I think this year we might be missing it, but they will be missing us. Mm. We go to their village fate, mm. and we're now adding something back to that village, and we're dancing Ascot and Ascot under Witchwood. They've been missing that for a number of years. Mm -hmm. They've even changed the dates last year, didn't they? Yeah, well, the suit, yeah. The suit yeah. Yeah. You know, we're, we're putting something back. You have to go this year, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a little, little bit cynical <laughs> about this, because <laughs> I think, I personally think that three quarters of the population feel that if they've seen one Morris side, mm -hmm. they've seen a lot. I, to be honest, the, the most um, appreciative audiences we have had over the last two or three years of, of Morris dancing being a senior citizen's Christmas <laughs> dinner and the local um, the Society for the Mentally Handicapped. Mm. Um, the number of times we have danced and I have heard people say, seen one, you've seen them all, haven't you? And off they go. And I mean, to, to be honest, when we are invited to dance at a village fete like Ascot under Witchwood, people are not interested in seeing us dance. It's just a nice background noise and a background activity to yes, go but, on. But they want you there, though. Mm. They want us there, but yeah. for the wrong reasons. We're cheap you, you to fill will... half an hour in a programme. Yeah. Demand free beer next time. He the, wasn't at the same, the the wrong wrong the same face as I was. Who's to say that's the wrong reason, though? Yeah. Mm. I mean, well, if you're part, you're part of it, you're part of it, you're taking part. Okay, maybe you ought to be the star turn, but you're not. But the mere fact you're there, you're still, you're still enjoyed. Even if it's someone saying, oh God, it's the Morris dancers. Mm. <laughs> you know, that, that, Does that constitute that, enjoyment? It, 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 it might do for them. <laughs> the worst venue we ever dance at is our own village carnival. Yeah. But a, pro a problem in his own town, we all know this. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about the, oh, not the Morris dancers again syndrome. Now, one of the crowds near me, very Paceheckers, and they only perform the play the Saturday before Christmas, Saturday before Easter, the Sunday before Palm Sunday. If they're feeling really keen, they'll go out on either the Monday or the Wednesday. But that's getting very thin these days. And then they have a walking tour on the Thursday. So there's a maximum of four perform performances a year. The Sunday tour has become fairly rigid. And it's got to the state where in the last part on the Sunday, parents who were taken to see the Paceggers when they were kids bringing their children along to see the pace takers. It's a really nice atmosphere. But there's two pubs opposite each other. So they do the one first and the crossroad together. And 
we were in, we sort of took one of the lads around this year, because he's given me loads of lifts in the past and sort of let him have a few beers on that tour. And we were standing at the back of the crowd, and this chap comes, I mean, mummers play, face it play, same thing, it lasts at maximum 15 minutes, once a year, and this chap, effing, Placeggers, they're always effing coming around here. <laughs> and he stormed off out the back. He was furious. So there's always going to be somebody like that. And that's 15 minutes of his yeah, time a year that he's objecting to. Well, our village mummers, um, we've got a history of like 112 years or so performance. And we still have a local police constable who objects to it. And he tries to drive his car through the crowd every year. You know, and he's been doing that for 25 years. So that's tradition. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you miss it? I mean, it didn't come next year. <laughs> this year, because they rebuilt one of the pubs, we actually could, at one site where he normally comes, we were actually off the road. And we actually felt sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> because normally he, he hugs us all and we bait the car around and get very upset. You know, and he think, I think he enjoys it. But, but right, you see, Perhaps the element that goes that goes with this is first of all, the people who come to see you every year come because there's something in it for them. You know, they're not the casual crowd in the same sort of way. And it needs time to build up in your community. You can't do it for everywhere you go to, you know, but in your community, your day, your weekend or whatever it is, you know, you've got to do it ten or twelve years before the locals even know you do it on a regular basis. I mean, I've mentioned my mummers. Um, we perform on Boxing Day. There really is no problem about performing on Boxing Day. Nobody in the village has got anything else to do on Boxing Day. So you have a large crowd. I've been involved for 32 years. You know, and we're still getting crowds of like 250 at a stop. You know, I mean, that's been going on for quite a long time now. We took the players to Sidmouth this year. <laughs> Right? And they suddenly discover that actually the real world is not like their own village on Boxing Day. And they actually had to struggle you know, to be entertaining. They didn't have to be entertaining the village. Everybody knows the script, everybody knows what they got, all the audience knows their lines, as it were, and what to do. It all happens on Boxing Day, and you invite your friends because you know it's going to happen, and things like this. As an entertainment, when you have to catch a cart crowd that's cold, it's a different problem altogether. And I think the trouble, yeah, the not trouble, one of the problems we have with the cops or Morris is that in fact most of the crowds, most of the places we go to, we have to work them up from cold. And it is difficult communicating, and it's a problem I notice that the men's side have an easier time of it because they're used to the culture, and the women's side have a problem on the whole. In establishing some of the linkage. Mm. It's, it's certainly a problem with Fleet at the moment, but it's like, how do you establish a rapport with a crowd? Because we don't have an approach. I remember Sarah, when I discussed that with Sarah, she said, it was easy in the old days, you used to flirt with the audience. <laughs> you know, and I know exactly what they meant, you know, it's the song, they had a, a way of reacting, which is really not acceptable to the present of Sonnet. Does that really matter? Because one of the things that you're raising is who's the magic for? Is the magic for the dancers right. or for the audience? Well, both, I hope. Right. right. So, but, it, but as a dancer, you might get a real high out of dancing something phenomenally well, you think. Yeah. But that for the audience means nothing. It was a side that dances badly, perhaps, but is, is really switched on to sort of street yeah. entertainment. Yeah. The magic is for the audience. Yeah. I, so, I met, met yeah, sides yeah. last year who are fairly new and they were very, very entertaining. You know, what's that? They're great fun to be with, and if I take my friends along and say, here's a Morris side, and they had a great evening with them, and they're awful, actually, mm. but they had all the old skills, you know, that they had uh, characters who were funny, uh, an animal that was exotic, it was a dragon who was in love with motor cars. <laughs> you know, you can see it stand in the middle of the road, drooling over these cars. <laughs> 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 And you, the whole audience was actually totally yes. absorbed by it. Yeah. You draw, do you? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, by personal belief, it's time. You know, it takes time to establish rapport to get a regular audience. And these are the people who are not really the ones that are going to patronise you because they will fall by the wayside very quickly.
didn't it partly depend on what else happens? I mean, with, with us, we sometimes, some of the places we go to regularly and get very good receptions at, though there might only be half a dozen people there, are pubs in the middle of the Fen where nothing happens the rest of the year. <laughs> Maybe it's a major occasion when we turn up. Okay, the darts team goes out every couple of weeks, but otherwise nothing happens in that pub. But we come once a year and there's something happens and there's a live live music and all the rest of it, but we go other places where there but, are... But so a many whole... of the traditional customs, not just in this country, in Europe though, are the, the area has its tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, like if Padstow, you know, the people for up to 14 or 15 miles away, that was the, the thing, it was common not just for Padstow, but all the villages and town ships around, everybody went in for it. I had a neighbour for many years who <coughs> lived in Padstow before the war. And he used to say that uh, on May Day, the craves were as big then as they are now, the people just didn't come from so far away. Mm -hmm. You can't have bigger craves at Padstow, I mean the place isn't big enough, <laughs> you see, to increase the number of people on the site. Um, if you go to Abbott's Bombay, you know, it's empty during the day, here he's working, but you only get in the village in the evening, and it's solid with people. You can't watch the dancing, because, you know, there's... <laughs> There isn't room to get close to them and so on. But the whole place is having a bop. They have a great time. Or two. Yeah. I think some time is very important, Rod, because we, we, we dance at sunrise in May Day in Amstel Park. We've been about 10 years. And there are people who come out from the town, apart from the joggers who come across by accident, the dog walkers whose jaws have dropped a mile. Yeah. The people who generally come out, it's freezing cold, I mean, we know we're out there freezing cold because we're getting out the pub afterwards. But there are these mad people who come out and watch us and seriously enjoy it. So we get, they get something out of it. So you get a certain magic from that, from that sort of yeah. connection. You also get magic, I think it's sometimes, often when you're invited to places like women's institutes or Irish clubs. And we find mm -hmm. the Irish are far more appreciative as a whole of Boris than most audiences in England. They're never dancing in any other country, like England or Ireland or elsewhere. But Within the, within the British Isles, the Irish in the lovers, you know, you just dance up and it's a, they applaud straight away. It's tremendous. But um, often I think we choose the wrong venues. We tend to go and dance outside pubs where there's the anticipated man and the dog. We don't really care and we'd rather not be there. And sometimes you get usually middle class people who brought their children out to see the Morris and look, these are Morris dancers, mm -hmm. take it in, absorb it, and then whistle off in the Volvos. And people in the pub think, why don't they stop dancing so they come inside and perhaps have a music session yeah. which they appreciate much more than dancing or rather than work there at all and yeah. shuffle off somewhere else. But why go to those places? Um, yeah. Usually because some <laughs> things you get a good drink there Sorry? or something. Yeah. Yes, I know there is a certain amount of inertia. I mean, I think we've now got, I mean, after, what, seven years? Seven years, eight years, we've now got four or five pubs which are fixed now. And we hope to keep adding on to those. I mean, we, if, if they don't work one year, we don't. We maybe yeah. try in two or three years. If they're not working, then we don't go again. So, I mean, it's, it takes time to work up that yeah. whole year's repertoire of, of occasions. But then we've now got four or five places where we go, and people do come to see us, and, uh, and, it's, and it doesn't actually take that long. We don't have to get into it for 12 years, you know, four or five years but is enough. You're sort of introducing a new concept that the reason the tradition only had its day is that they had problems finding another place to go to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's part of the problem. The audience don't know what to do. I mean, we had a... Ah. Throw money, yes. We had a lovely occasion many moons ago, and it's dancing in a small town near Southampton. And they pedestrianised the street because you couldn't really get a car down it anyway, so very, very narrow, just room for Morrison. And it was one of those occasions when quite a few people had turned up, you know, there was one of my colleagues from work and there was somebody else's aunt and that sort of thing standing around, and, and they seemed to be enjoying it. At the end of the first dance, nothing happened, all the much, something like that. And the squire turned around and said, look, it's not television, you are allowed to clap. And that broke the ice, and they suddenly joined in, they realised that they had to contribute. The complete opposite is dancing somewhere like Fort Park, yeah. or any other theme park, but Fort Park is the one that I've, I've had to suffer. And it's, you know, well I paid my four pounds, entertain me. <laughs> and you get nothing 
at all. It's yeah. like, you know, I've yeah. come here to absorb entertainment. I haven't come to take part in it. Maybe people need re-educating that they don't see live, particularly yes. live and intimate performances very often. Good. Interest is it, on my recent trip to the States, a number of the sides had almost professional claims. I would say almost. People who been trained in drama or, or mime or something of that sort and saw claiming as their speciality you know? and that involved not just fooling a ranger in the Morris show but they actually had a pers persona you know and they actually sold themselves and explained the Morris and things like this and got a rapport with the audience you know got them on so right at the start you know got on like a ringmaster talked to people and things of that sort you know there is that breaking the ice problem so We're getting too many men speaking. Are there any the women size represented who actually have the sort of feeling problems? Well, I was, I was going to say, carrying on from what you said, I mean, Fleet Morris danced at so many women's institutes and we just go down so well. Because so we've, got, we've got the audience there that want us. They're there to enjoy themselves and join in with us. And every time we dance there, it's just... It's just I so it, yeah. good, it's unbelievable. <coughs> I mean, we're, we're, of course, we're a men's side, so you just have to have a social dance at the end. Oh, and, we, we, and that, that always goes down. Oh, well, we, 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 all, we always demonstrate and then we teach them a dance and we all dance together. But um, I, th I think because they've invited you there and they know what to expect and they know that you're their evening's entertainment and, and we know it as well. And the whole thing just gels so magically. Every time we dance and these. I think, it, I think it's, um, as you say, the audience know why you're there. At, at a pub, they think, why, why are you here? The football's on tonight. Mm. But they've invited you there to be their entertainment for the evening. And it just, the, just goes down so well. The clubs are a good example because they exist in a network of inviting speakers. You know, and now you get it because of your reputation. Mm. The secretary has an idea of what you're going to be like already. Mm has to sell it to the club so they know you're going to be like you are yeah, as it were. yeah. Um, and they still invite us yes that's right <laughs> well, it's amazing isn't you it know. well they amazing. are yes I think that's one that you know these are our high spots but they always get on so they well win. don't they they, really they are absolutely they? fantastic yeah. yes it may be self-indulgent but um, some of the best Morris events I've actually been to have been a, a lovely pub in the country where there is only one man and a dog who has actually been slightly been used. And you, you just don't even have any audience reaction. We have a cracking good time. It's like yeah. What's the right place in that situation? Then? Why is that different from dancing in your practice hall? Mm. Uh, yeah, I think uh, building the atmosphere, the, the fact that you're actually doing <laughs> something like different. I have to say, it's my travel. experience is some practices, yes, in fact, yeah. is that I can get tremendous kick out of a practice as well. Mm. You know, once you get mm. the music going with a pulse and the dancers mm. going with a verb, it's fantastic. And the problem is very often, how do you translate that to performance each side? And the dancers stop and the musicians keep going and you can't talk above them and you can't stop them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Why there is always a problem when you're dancing with another side. You know, it's difficult to get the somehow the spirit flowing between two teams because of the stopping and starting unless your sides are very close to each other at the start. I, I think that it's enthusiasm, isn't it? I mean when you when you come to Fleet always, I mean you bring with you your enthusiasm. Well it's fantastic, yeah. It is. Mm. Yeah. It is. If, if you're not there, it's it's not there either. I can't tell. I know. <laughs> <laughs> To me, it's always marvellous. <laughs> it, it, it is when you're there. Yeah. You, you ask for female speakers, right? I've been delegated by the women dancers in Golden Star. You don't stress their views, that's right. <laughs> you were drunk at the time. Yeah. Um, they particularly want to raise the question of uh, the changing meaning of the word magic. Uh, magic. Change of <laughs> Sorry, I'm only using it because I don't have a don't know what word I'm supposed to use, you see. If, if you look at yeah, I, I know I know what you mean. Um, I'm gonna try um, I'm, I'm gonna put a, a meaning before you. If you look at traditional um, forms of magic, you find that magic is a, a system with definite rules and laws 
and people who understand it control the rules and laws. And you have people like witches and what have you. The rules exist because a lot of fairy stories, um, the evil person manages to create a spell and then themselves falls under the spell because there's a definite rule and they've managed to enchant their own house or what have you. It is a very logical, rational system. So traditional magic believed that there were um, guiding principles, spirits or rules or laws, to the whole universe. Now modern magic I think is rather different. It's, yeah. it's a reaction to the fact that the world is becoming extremely rational and a lot of people aren't happy with the limitations that rationality puts on their lives. Like the limit to how much wealth you can have. The definite knowledge about the state of your health can be very distressing. And so there's a tremendous desire for an alternative set of laws. People are very, very keen on alternative medicines, whether or not they're proven. They're extremely keen to know what the future holds by reading what a load of dickheads write every day in the paper about horoscopes. You know, there's a complete industry based on this please tell me something which isn't part of the hard rational world. Now, I think we are pandering to part of that because we are doing something that's got a strong irrational element and we seem to be getting something very beneficial from it. Some people uh, also get something very, very beneficial from it. Yeah. I, but it's a different sort of magic to the magic. Yes, yeah, so you really say that the magic to the average person is actually a rational thing, even though it's scientifically it's irrational. No, I'm saying it used to be a system that was logical and rational. Yeah. I think in modern times it's becoming more of an escape. Well, from... I'm only using it because I'm trying to find a word that means I can't explain it. Well, how many, how many people here will be out? out in their local town, hear a band and think, a band, let's go and see who is playing. I mean, how many still have that childlike quality about them? I do. Yeah. I think it's a band. Where is it? Where's it coming from? Let's go and find it. Yes. Now, how many still do that? Yeah. Yeah. And to, to you, it's magic. You hear a noise. I must find out where it's coming from. It's magic. Yeah. And people have the same reaction. They'll hear bells and music. It's more as, where is it? For them, it's magic. It's the same thing. It's... Yeah, but not everybody would. No, exactly. I mean, we would. No, no, but, but no. People hear about the light brass bands, and I think, God's a brass band, I'll go the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> Others <laughs> might think, hey, it's a band, well, where's it coming from? Let's we can it. turn this question around. The one, the one question is really um, we know that some of the, the population respond like mm. that. Yeah, it's magical, it gives them some of the So the question really ought to turn the question around why isn't it like that for a lot of people? They're tone deaf. <laughs> no such thing. No, it's these thing. brass bells, isn't it? <laughs> they jingle rather than nice. Yeah. I think um, it's the same reason some people are particularly fond of pickle bangers and other people aren't. Yeah. It's part of a natural variation yeah. of taste and tongue. I think a lot of it is some. Um, we can genetically think that. <laughs> people well, think I, they ought not to be. I and know this, in Bampton, people are there are certain people who are dead against the Morris. Because, in fact, that makes them different from the majority. Ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we you know, there's this story. determination to be different at all costs for some people. But there's also a determination to be the same. Yes. Making fun of the Morris is the thing that you do. A lot of people will, will do it without even thinking about why. Yes, but aren't Morris dancers the worst? If, you, if you're a Morris dancer, out of kit, and you see a Morris sign, I mean, it's just great fun to heck on, isn't it? It's yeah. I mean, brilliant! Ah, oh, that's wrong! Oh, <laughs> 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 the rest of the population are all really positive dancers. <laughs> 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 yeah! Really, it's not how you say it's a lot of people are up in the sun. I'm a Morris dancer, I should have said it, shouldn't I? I was terribly tempted, but I dared. It's not very tempted. But Steve, Steve's actually said something very important, which is, okay, at its most successful, yes, we've got this magic of the Morris and it works and we go away and have a smashing occasion and so on. But actually, if you say to people at work or people you meet on the train or people you meet in Sainsbury's, hello, I'm a Morris dancer. <laughs> yes. There is the normal reaction... I mean, maybe it doesn't come out always when they, when they see Morris, but the normal reaction 
is mockery yeah. and scorn. And I had a stand no, about my boss no. at work that the Morris was getting in the way of work. What he meant was the Morris was getting in the way of um, a company do he didn't want to go to, which was a weekend. I said I was Morris dancing, I wasn't going. And I said, but you play rugby. Oh, that's not, not the same at all. I said, well, yeah, but if you played for Harlequins, you'd treat it like that. And he laughed. But in, well, we like to think that in, in yeah. Morris World Horwich or one of the, the, the Harlequins or the Wasps or whatever of the, of the Morris World, I mean, you, you may disagree, <laughs> it's your pleasure. But, um, you know, it's as important to us, but he can't see that it matters like that. It matters as much as his rugby or more. Ah, but rugby's all right, rugby's sensible. I've announced a threat and all, all people at work are working in a very small office, there's only ten of us there. And they know they know I do Morris dancing. If I'm dancing locally and I tell them I'm dancing, they come and watch me. I mean they might come and laugh, but they still come. Make, they make the effort, put it in their diaries, Denise is dancing at so and so, or go and laugh. They all turn up. <laughs> You know, um, it doesn't bother me being I mean, Trap them one, despite themselves. I mean, one, I mean, one friend, Alison, she came to watch Kenneth dance, and Alison was tossed up by the Kenneth Morris men, and her friend Karen was attacked by the horse. And three years later, they're still talking about it, you know. They're, they're still comparing Have notes. Have they sued? The time they were attacked by the Morris and the horse. Well, maybe there's, there are two separate strands to the actual magic of the Morris. There's the magic we've actually been talking about, which is of a performance where you dance well, you feel linked in with the side, you've had a good rapport with the audience, there's the buzz of being a performer, you've all had a good time, it's been in a nice setting. Uh, things that actu actually create magical events, and you can feel that sort of magic in a, a, a good party, a good concert, it's a, it's a similar sort of feeling. But to me, there's also a magic that you get just from dancing this particular pattern and dancing it well yeah. and you get that as you would say sometimes at a practice when you're not performing there's nobody there you are just very satisfied having d done this particular thing but why this particular thing this is something I can't explain there is a magic uh, just about the feel of the movement um, and the fact that you're going through this sort of and it's a uh, uniting thing, thing yes, yes. it bonds yeah. you as well because you only enjoy it if really not only if you dance well but then the whole thing gels yes. and everyone Can't dances as well. Yeah. But that that is divorced for me. It's a separate oh, magic not the stuff. And um, I can't explain that, but there is something about it I find very attractive. Really. I I think that is very much related to individuals. Um, for for sure, one, I worked as a crewer. And I remember explaining to somebody who was looking, looking around, I said, this is a really beautiful yeast. And I was getting very excited. And it, it was a beautiful yeast. And these people started laughing. They couldn't understand that yeast could be beautiful. Now, it was something that appealed to me. It's the same way that a mathematician can say that um, three lines on a page are elegant, and other people don't want them. It's something that appeals to you individually. That that is a very personal thing. Yeah, it's also can't. it's also because you know about it. Oh, and I'd say the same about a computer program. Mm. Yeah, you know, some people are elegant coders, and some people aren't, and there is an attraction to it. But I tell you, sort of lights on the screen. It is a personal thing, but everyone here shares it, mm. and I, it, although it's very personal. There must be something, and I don't know what it is. Yes, but if we all relate to. Well, if we were model railway people, we'd also share it if we got together for a weekend. Yeah. But I know amongst the women's work. side, of which I've worked with many in the last 20 years, I must say, with pleasure, it's how the women themselves blossom in the environment of the Morris. You know, Minden Road was the side of the advertise the paper and. 15 or 16 people turned up who wouldn't say boo to a goose, sort of thing. And after a few years of the Morris, uh, they're on the sort of governors of the local school, they stand for the council, they actually stand up for themselves as people. Yeah, the Morris has given them something. Uh, did, did, did you uh, think that's only words only like self respect and things like this also come into it, I might say. But, but does it have do to be Morris to do that? Mm. I mean, is no. that just because they happen to be... No, oh, yeah. it's a group of people. Yes, yes. 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 yes.
Yeah. But the, the Morris dance are supportive of each other. Yeah. You know, many sports you can enter which aren't competitive, really. You know, uh, the Morris is one of the few things, and bell ringing is the only one, the other one I know, <laughs> where the you rely on the rest to be for the product, mm -hmm. and you can't be outstanding. It's not like a cricket side where a excellent player can hold the rest up. It doesn't work with the Morris. You know, like you're as no better than your worst, as it were. You know, it's one of the few things where the best up to down up sort of the Morris up. But it's also <laughs> interesting that um, you know, in a group of people, you decide to have your better dancers and your worst dancers. And you sort of think that you really like being with the best dancers. Additionally, you actually go away for a weekend with six people, five of whom you feel aren't terribly good dancers. By the end of the weekend, you've all had a bloody good time because you've gelled together mm. as a group of people. Yeah. Yes, how often are you on days of dance where, where you think, oh my god, there's only seven of us. We've all got to dance every dance, there's no That's rest at all. Fun. And you, and, and, you know, and you have this That's what this constitution that says, says we shall not we shall <laughs> never go away without you know fewer than ten people, so we've always got spares. Yeah. And then this this thing happens and you actually have to work bloody hard. Sometimes you have got six or five of you and then you think we'll do invent new dances and be thoroughly innovative. Um, you have to have a much better time than you would do when there's two people standing out thinking well, I wish I was in that dance, or why was I pushed out, or, you know, God, yeah. why am I doing this now? You know, he could be doing it far better than me. You know? right, you know, this, this team spirit somehow gels in extraordinarily and quite often utterly ridiculous <coughs> ways that you can never predict. There's, uh, often there's no objectivity to it. Mm. You were talking a moment ago about support in the nice world, and yes, that's true, but it seems to me another significant feature and, and something that it shares with sport is rivalry and it seems to me that many of the best teams particularly perhaps the best North West teams um, have, an, have an arrogance in them a belief that they are better than anybody else around Can I, can I, can I, I disagree with that? that I can't believe that a North West team can possibly be as good Point of information, <laughs> which, which actually backs Tony up. One of our practices, one, one of the team, one of the chaps on the team, was actually told, "Look, you're dancing for Horwich now. You're proud of that." And he's not been talked like that. I mean, he's a headmaster of a primary, headmaster of primary school. <laughs> <laughs> he's not been spoken at like that for for years. And he's about the time you them, wasn't it? Yeah, probably <laughs> was. So he did an awful lot good. Um, Yes, we do. We do practice the arrogance. And one of the nice things about our, our yes, any, St George's Day is that when it works, we've got... talk to their employees like that. Yeah. I work for a corporate firm. I'm told I'm number... We're yeah. the number one company. Yeah, you but the difference is we believe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem. I can't imagine why all the rest of these Morris sites actually think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the nice things, we have a, a day just of, um, unfortunately, just of men's Northwest teams. And You're right, it's unfortunate, yeah. yeah. It's very, but um, <laughs> they don't like the competition. Um, but last year was also a disaster in that everyone turned up. <laughs> wasn't very good. A couple of years ago, we had a really good day. Everyone got on really well. The dancing was really good. And someone said, well, what's happened? Why has it changed? I said, well, the thing is, we've now got six teams turning up, all of whom know they're the best team in the area. <laughs> But they've, they've grown out of the need to prove it by being nasty about it. They just yeah. know. With the result that they all actually dance a lot better than they did five years ago when they were being nasty and trying to prove it all the time. That's men for you, isn't it? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we cannot help our biology. Come on. Oh, oh, oh dear me. What an excuse. I'm to that to the pockets. I can't actually be blamed for being a man. <laughs> Only if you carry on behaving like that. <laughs> but there is a difference, thinking of the types of Morris, you know, and I have to say that, you know, Northwest Border and Cotswold, and there is the rest. <laughs> the street down to the They are different, they appeal to different people's personality, you know, different personality types, so you end up with a different performance. But there's no doubt in my mind that the Cotswold sides that dance well, you know, um, have a uniqueness about the group that they are. I mean, 
I went out um, last year in Windsor with Sheffield. Yes, I was there. Uh, now I was looking at the Sheffield video, as it were, and I had thought at one stage that I might be suitable dance or two to teach, you know. But you can't do it. You know, what they have achieved is something which I, I couldn't communicate to you, even if you see the video. If you see the video, you don't want to do it. You know, that group is excellent in what they do. And um, us other sides wouldn't do it like that. We wouldn't do that their sort of way and things like this. You know, but they, they some have this rapport amongst themselves. You know, and you couldn't, I couldn't imagine actually being in that or really wanting to produce a paid imitation of it. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think the good sides to me are the ones that somehow are together. Um, not, I don't mean just in dancing or anything. The pursuit of excellence as an objective in its own is not actually what the Morris is about. They've also found their own yeah. character, haven't they? They're not, as you say, they're not trying to imitate. You know, yeah. whatever they do, no. that's their character and that's it. Yeah. Whether it's shy, reserved, you see bold, it amongst the border so. sides, there are some very good border sides who have a character. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, and you think, <laughs> and you're fantastic, this lot. And then you see another border side who actually you can almost guess who they're copying. Yes. Mm. You know, um, they're vulgar, they're noisy, they're inelegant. Come on, name, name names, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. There are two, two sides I saw at Chippenham last year who sort of bluey, greeny sort of rag jackets, and they were awful. And they didn't think they were. Uh, but they but just don't have the discipline to dance. And things of that sort, you know, and they actually aren't enjoyable. Yeah. You know, and that's the trouble with these border people. They seem to confuse noise and vigour with dancing. We had this problem in judging the Sidworth competitions. You know, um, I get very impressed by performance, but I have to be reminded by Sue, for example, that just having a good idea and then hammering it to death, you know, without any skill is actually not to, the way not to win a competition. And quite right, you know, the border sides will never do well at Sidmouth until they get some, dis when I say discipline, some performance care in I was just going to say, go back to um, magic. Um, I think they're called, are they called Wild Hunt? Yes. I mean, get, yes. get them by themselves and they, they just develop their own persona. They take the audience along. And there's just something about them, and they have to perform alone. You can't interrupt the performance; or they lose it. Isn't this one of the problems with our days of dance idea, though? And it's one of the things we've hit, being a Northwest team, not being a Cotswold team, is that. Is that a mental? Well, particularly in yeah. it, it matters because we make more noise than heavier. But you've got you've got a team of eight or nine or ten or twelve. Men? If you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say people. <laughs> First of all, you mentioned prize winning. But it's noticeable the modern teams never actually dared into a competition. Yeah. But Is your team all out to stunt, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> having, having, seen, having seen some of the offspring, no. There's a well-known Cotswold no, side in the, 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 the Berkshire and the Berkshire, <laughs> you know, who never seem to dance on their own. You know, and I've never understood how they've moved in that position either. Yeah, but the, the, what I was going to say is that if you go, you get a play of dance and you get a situation like, We've got a border team, a Cotswold team, a Northwest team, yeah. and a rapper team. And you find a space the Northwest people are happy in. And sort of they turn up and there's drums and there's trumpets and there's cock and there's what. Yeah, it looks fine, it's splendid. It looks really good. And the rapper team come on and there's this sort of tiny thing. And they're superb. Yes, yes they probably are. Yeah, technically, <laughs> technically, they're probably better. If you take that rapper team, and move them out from that space like and into <laughs> oh yeah, into yeah, space not big in a pub. Yeah, yeah, move them into that space and it suddenly becomes absolutely yeah. yeah. wonderful. Yeah. One of the problems is a lot of the time we see each other on very artificial do's, which are days yeah. and dance, mm -hmm. which are have to be lowest common denominator. I'm sure it's one of the reasons why Horrocks actually have a very big um, 
image of themselves. Have they? Right? <laughs> oh, just, just, just there as a slide. Yeah. I, I'm actually very mild compared to this. Not as big as half your time. But um, the difference is that Orange can dance. <laughs> I haven't heard well, that one before. I, <laughs> but I, the, now the best team of rain. It's just a question how you beat the radius. <laughs> <laughs> This is the absolute arsehole of modern society. <laughs> you know, it is advertising, you know, let's try and sell it. We could all be working trying to improve it, but we won't all sell it, no matter how bad it is. Um, several years ago, I was Squire of Golden Star, and when I went out, I had a whole mixture of dancers, I had some dancers, and about four dancers, and if I couldn't get them to dance with the side when we were out, then it was a failure. And it was much more important that all of the dancers had a good time and felt part of the group and that we were not a family unit because we're not related but we're really good friends that was the whole purpose of us being together now not to prove that we were better than anyone else I don't give a toss whether we're better than anyone else we're better at having a good time with each other than anyone else but you've actually just said it there you've got an image of your golden star hat and as you just described them had an image of what they were about, um, and that gave it an identity which it was proud of. Yeah, but we weren't we weren't seeking to prove ourselves better than no, anyone no, else. No, no, no. But, no, but, but, but that's the fine. difference is between a side with an image of what it wants to be and a side without yeah. an image of what it wants to be. Yes. And typically, we find those with an image, whatever that image is, is, are the ones who are the more successful because they know where they're going. And they know it, and they've tried it. They have a form when they're actually mostly going down the vine in Dove Street, our lot. <laughs> See, it's quite interesting because the implication, like you said, is that competition doesn't fit. In other words, you shouldn't actually be competitive to others. So, you know, a good side is concerned with its own dancing and its own performance. It's not concerned with am I better than the neighbouring side or visiting side and things like that. And I I guess that most of the sides I've been involved with is have never worried about that. It's had to be imposed on us. The fact that we actually, I want to say we, four sides of which I'm closely associated with are all in the Portsmouth Arts Festival this year, we're actually competing for a trophy against each other. Nothing to do with you, of course. Pressure mm -hmm. there. Nothing, no pressure for you at all, right? But we understand. Well, I, I, I'm completely unbiased because I know which side's best. <laughs> Depends who I'm talking to. <laughs> so are you being a judge this year? Oh, now I'm playing for them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Two, I hope. That's a lot of nominators. And I've been teaching the third side its dances. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth side, we've actually had some sessions of my videos. <laughs> so I'm a bit involved with all of them. <laughs> so, but again, the, the way I believe these entries are seeing it is not as a competition with each other, because if it's, it's a garland side, a woman's Cotswold, a men's Cotswold, and a rapper team, you know, there is no way you can judge it. But they are not seeing it as a way of working themselves up early, because it's in March, so on this month. Um, and they're com comparing themselves with how they did last year. You know, they're actually seeing themselves as a form. You know, what they want to know is how well have they done this year? 